We're shooting cars. The greatest, my favorite thing in the world. I'm so pumped, dude. I'm so excited. For the car geeks, we have a Porsche 911 992 Carrera 4S from 2020. It is the dream machine. The hips are thick, and I say thick with two Cs, by the way. We need to show off how wide it is. We need to show off the stance because it is a big car and is very stable. It's a sports car. And we need to show the fact that if it's going at speed, it's not gonna just fly off the road. And we need to show the shoulders, the line here, all the way across the top of the car because that sort of delineates it from just a normal car is that it has those shoulders. Um, and we need to show some of like the newer design details, like the trough going up the front. The rims are pretty and then around the back, tail light is brand new. It's got this amazing tail light that goes from ear to ear. It looks like this massive smile as it flies past you on the street. Also a little fun fact, it has the pause button in the tail light. So as you're hitting the brake pedal, you're pausing the car and this lights up. Kind of cool. Porsche has always been known for having this line that goes from the front of the cockpit all the way to the very rear of the car that's called the fly line. It starts here, it goes up dramatically, and it tapers off for aerodynamic purposes. And it looks beautiful, and this is something that sort of tracks through every car that Porsche has ever made. So that's something we need to show. And to do that, we're gonna play with light. We have Sony's latest and greatest A7R Mark IV. We're gonna be pushing this to its limits and we're gonna be documenting every inch of this car as best we can. I'm excited. One thing I don't like with car photography is seeing shadows that sort of extend outside of the photo. And since I'm gonna be shooting up there, I have to be careful to keep this as high as possible. Also, if you can see a light source in a photo when you're shooting cars or anything for that matter, it's nice to try to mimic that light source at least a little bit so it doesn't look unnatural. We'll just try to mimic some of these lights over here. We could force the photo to look like it was shot at night by just overpowering everything. And in doing that, I could set the camera on the tripod up there and I could come down here and sort of move the light every time I trigger it. And then I can put them together and create one photo that looks like it was lit by a bunch of flashes. That might be the play. Yeah, that's comfortable. There it is. Okay. So I connected my phone to the camera, which means I can control the shot from my phone. I can take the photo. I can control everything. White balance, DRO, everything. Shutter speed, all of it. Oh, oh. we're good. You see this happen? It's gonna be sweet. Three, two, one. I did that from my phone. How cool is that? And there's the replay of the photo. Sick. Let's try one here. Perfect. There it is. So now you get the details on the hood. You get the details on the fenders. That's perfect. I'm pumped. I'm happy about that. I will go over to here. And this now is going to ride down the entire length of the car. So there will be some photoshopping in our future. But uh, whatever. It's part of the fun. This is the benefit of not having an external battery. It's so lightweight and so easy to just bounce around when you're using just one to light up a situation like this. Look at how rich that color is. I'm going one-handed, but I can watch myself in this, which is super cool. Sick. I'm gonna try one more just so I have options, because it's so easy. I'm gonna go over here and try to replicate the lights from this wall, which is the only source of light that's in the photo. Um, so at least the angle makes a little bit more sense. Right about here, and let's hit it. Cool, much better. How dope is it that we are now like 40 meters away from the camera and I can still control it? That's sick. Look at the camera up there all by itself. <laughs> okay, so now here we are. Let's try it. It looks really good, check this out. That's beautiful. So cool, I think that's everything for this shot. Cars always look the coolest when the brakes are on, but if you don't have an extra model, how do you turn on the brakes? 
You just put something heavy on them. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, it's beautiful. Just drop it low. Let's do this. How about that, huh? Clean car is a happy car. It's part of the gig. <laughs> okay, cool, good enough. It's different, it's artsy, it's new. It's courtesy of your boy. <laughs> We're up, don't worry about me, I got it. Oh, that's dope though, that looks really sick. I'm gonna lower the shutter speed. Because of the five axis image stabilization in the Sony, I can shoot handheld at 1 50th of a second. That's pretty unique. A little bit more abstract, slightly harder to find the car, but I think it's kind of fun. I think I'm good, dude. So there you have it, that's step one. Here we are. Midnight, raining on a rooftop, sick car, sick cameras, sick flash, could be any better. So now we go home, we dump the photos. A little word of advice, always dump the photos immediately, never wait, otherwise you're gonna lose the joy, I promise. Dump the photos, we're gonna get to editing, we'll see where we go from there. First Big Mac. <laughs> where are you going? Come back. It's the day after, and it's time to get into some editing. So step one, I'm gonna start with one that's fairly simple, and one of the ones that we uh, initially started shooting with. Just want a little bit of a warm up. I wanna sort of get things going and sort of understand how light bounces off the car and the color of the car and what I can do. Um, Cause if you start going down the wrong road with the harder photos, you're gonna end up with the final product that looks like shit. And that's not the goal. So let's warm up just like any good activity or sport or whatever, let's warm up. So first and foremost, here we go. This is our first photo. This was just standard straight out of camera. Um, this photo I think is pretty dope considering there's no extra light. It's just the lights in the background and the sunlight. Um, not even the lights on the car were on, which is typically a no-no, but you know what? Let's pretend like the car's sleeping. Why not? And then I'll show you the other photos. We're gonna go with this one. This will be our composite photo of the day. We will be combining this with a couple different exposures, including this and this and perhaps this, and we'll make one full photo that I think will look pretty dope. So the first thing we're gonna do with this photo is we're gonna balance all the lights out and try to put the right emphasis on lights on the right parts of the car um, before we really get into the nitty gritty details of the photo. So here we go, let's begin. Okay, so now that that's done, we have an exposure that I'm pretty happy with. Um, it's gonna take a little bit more work later to get all the colors perfect, but I'm fairly happy with where we started. Now I just wanna go into Photoshop and really get rid of some of the imperfections, one, the reflections in the paint, some of the stuff in the background that I think is a bit distracting, um, stuff like that, and just sort of clean everything up so it looks as clean as possible. First thing I wanna do is create a new layer, and then I'm gonna go in on the second layer, get rid of some of the reflections in the car that I don't think need to be there, stuff like this using the patch tool. This takes quite a while, but it is always worth it. This is where having the 61 megapixels on the E7R4 comes in handy. It is amazingly useful to be able to zoom in and get pixel perfect patch replacements that really, really aren't at all distracting in the final product. So let's keep going. So that's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it so far. Um, now I just want to change some of the colors, fix up the colors, add some of those blues back in, and uh, we'll call it quits for Photoshop. Just gonna add some details like fog and haze that I think give a little bit of depth to the photo and push your eyes towards the right place. 
Um, it adds a little bit of drama, a little bit of something that wasn't quite there when we were shooting the photo. I'm going to bring out some of the highlights on top of the car. Like we were talking about when we were shooting the car, it's very important to show off the curves. And the best way to do that is to sort of create a punchy shoulder line across the car. You can see the shoulders, since it was such a bright and uh, cloudy day, the shoulders are pretty evenly lit from front to back. There's not too much in terms of crazy reflections of like clouds or anything in the sky. So all we really need to do is bring this line up a little bit in terms of exposure, maybe the fly line here, and maybe a little bit of the hood just to even it out so we get a little bit more focus on the contours of the car. And there you have it. This is the before and this is the after. Now we're gonna move on to the main photo, the one we spent so much time on that night. Um, this one is gonna be comprised of, I think, three different photos. It's gonna be a composition. And the whole goal with this photo was to add an entirely new dramatic lighting setup ourselves because what we had to work with was just not as interesting as I had hoped. Uh, there wasn't much ambient light to really play off of and mimic very well with the lights that we did have. Um, so it was a good opportunity to really, really push the B10 Plus and really test ourselves in terms of just using one flash over and over to create one good photo with a lot of different light sources. Um, also a good opportunity. I know with this photo, there's going to be a lot of really meticulous small detail photoshopping and with that having the 61 megapixels from the a7r4 is just absolutely invaluable so without further ado let's get started so here we go this is the main shot we're going to start working on from there we are going to add in this second angle of lighting and this third to sort of round everything out um i was thinking initially to have this one as well but this and this, I think, tell the same story, but I think this one tells it in a more punchy, kind of unique fashion, which focuses more on the direction of the lighting. And I kind of like that. So why not? So let's get started by evening out all the images and creating a good base on which we can start compositioning, compositing, comp, 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 comp. <laughs> And away we go. So that's pretty much all we're going to do in Lightroom for now. And then we're going to open them as layers in Photoshop. One very easy way to do this is to sort of establish your main layer, keep it at the bottom and then light and blend all the layers above it to allow the light from the one below it to affect the final photo. So here if we go lighten, you see it adds all the light from the photo below it up to here. A little bit detrimental in that it does add a little bit of light to the back of the car, but it's not much. And then we'll do the same for this one. And hopefully the photos will be lit all the way through. So there we go. We got one final, uh, I think, awesomely lit photo. Just a three light setup, pretty dramatic, a little bit dark, so you can really focus on the car because it's a bright color. And I like the texture that the beads of water add to the car. I think that's awesome. I also think it's cool that we didn't anticipate this, but the headlights were on in one of the photos, which means that now they're on in the final photo because we used the lighting tool. So now we go in and we fine tune all the details. We flatten all the images because I think they're lined up perfectly. I don't think there's much I want to change in terms of the lighting. If anything, it would be this part might be a little bit too bright. So I would mask that out. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now we'll flatten it out and we'll go in and we'll get rid of some of the reflections in the car that I don't think fit.
There we go. We got rid of a lot of the reflections and little things that I thought were kind of annoying me in the photo. So now we need to go in um, and sort of make it a little bit more dramatic. Just color it, maybe bring back in some of the blue. Just try to perfect everything and see how good we can get it to look before we send it back to Lightroom. So far, the photo doesn't look ultra unique, but we are getting close. One thing I do want to add is I want to give the idea that there's some water on the sensor or the lens because it is raining super heavy. So I kind of want to bring the photographer into the story with that. Um, and one way I'm going to do that is by giving a little bit more direction to the light coming from the back, the top left corner. And I'm going to add some assets that I've shot beforehand. Um, Mostly just me shooting super out of focus on a lit up crystal ball. There you have it. A lot of indecision, a lot of going back and forth, um, adding certain elements like lens flares and water droplets on the lens. It's not my forte, but it's something that I like to play around a bit. And that's kind of the point of this whole experience, right? Is I just want to play around and learn some things. Uh, I'm here to get better. So that's all I'm going to do. To add to that photo, I'm going to put it back in the Lightroom and then we're going to add the finishing touches there. Some bringing out some of the highlights on the car um, and just sort of giving it the final touch of character that I think it needs. And I think without further ado, there's the final photo. So the original was combined out of this, this and this, I think, to make this final photo, which I like the story it tells. Just a cool car hanging out in the rain. Perfect. Super clean. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for not only joining for the photo shoot, but the editing as well. You made it through the whole video. I am so proud of you. Thank you so much to photo.no for helping make this happen. Thank you to Porsche for letting us borrow the car to make such an awesome, awesome group of photos. I'm super stoked. I used the car for two more days. I didn't just shoot these two photos. I shot a bunch more. Hopefully we can include some of them in here. I am pumped. I'm super happy with the way the photo went. I hope you guys learned something. If you had something you would have rather me do, put it in the comments. I'm here for you. For now, thank you very much. My name is Kyle Meyer. I believe in you. Go out, keep killing it. Peace.